Dots was still hanging around after he got kicked out when the episode started! Considering how we ended last time, I think I should have seen this one coming. Haven't we started an episode like this before, recently? Well, you know, the running gags are the best ones. I think I even said that the last time, too. Continuity! We are, as always, the Bittersweet Gamers! We've nearly worked out what happened on the night in question. And we just need a little bit more prodding to get through Sarge's testimony. He's probably stopped shooting missiles at us. I'm the Opinionator! I'm Wee Squared, <laughs> and I don't think he's done shooting missiles anytime soon. Well, I've already read this line, maggots! I heard more fighting, and I got worried about Papa. So I left my room, but suddenly, I got dizzy and passed out. I remember a flame lighting up the room, and Papa grinning with delight. The relic was on fire, and I saw Mama's face inside. Here we go. That's when Papa must have been killed. If only I hadn't passed out. Okay, so we have to present something, but he, he had passed out, so he didn't see this. Yeah, this is kind of conjecture on his part. I believe Sarge's fear of fire is triggering a past memory. And as a result, the memory of what he really saw is being suppressed. When he tries to remember, the past memory is being overlaid onto the more recent one. Huh. Wow, the mind sure is a tricky beast. So I'll just have to find an inconsistency? Right. Once you find an inconsistent statement... How do you know there's one here? You're kind of leading me around by the hand, aren't you? If you were that good, why didn't you do it in the first place? Because I'm not the main defending lawyer. Oh, I, I guess you're right. Present the evidence that proves it. The main issue here is when the doctor was murdered. Was he really killed while Dots was there? I don't think so. How do we prove it? I mean, it's clear we have to go to the thing that got updated. Well, yeah. The doctor hid it in the ruins before his untimely death. That would appear to be kind of important. If, <laughs> duh, why, why hadn't we even thought of that? <laughs> Fortunately, it was the first piece of evidence in the list so we saw it rather immediately. Objection! Don't blame yourself, Sarge. After all, even if you hadn't passed out, the outcome would have been the same. What do you mean? I'm talking about the time of death. Your father wasn't killed right after you left your room. What? Explain yourself at once, private justice! What he saw and what he said happened, happened. But they didn't happen at the time he thinks they happened. You said you saw your father burning the orb or something, right? But that night, he went out to hide it in a cave. I mean, that's incontrovertible. <laughs> we found it in a freaking temple or shrine in a freaking cave. So, what you saw, Sarge, was something that happened before your father left to hide the orb. Ah! So you see, you didn't pass out right before he was killed. You passed out right before he left for the cave to hide the orb in the ruins within. So, e even if I hadn't passed out... That's right. The outcome would have been exactly the same. That's because your father, Dr. Buff, was killed after he returned from the ruins. And therefore, Sarge, there's no need for you to blame yourself. It isn't your fault. Oh, I see. Private Justice? Can... can you really say I bear no blame in this? Why do you ask? Because... the truth is... If I hadn't engaged in my siege defense, Papa would still be alive. Sarge... Papa wished nothing more than for me to lead a happy, healthy life. 
And that's why he quit his job and moved us out, away from the big city. But even then, I didn't have the courage to set foot into the outside world. And in the end... Why do we get all these camera zooms with Sarge? I failed to make Papa's wish come true. I mean, they're effective. I'm not complaining about it. This is a good scene, but... We've never gotten them before, but all of a sudden, they just keep slowly zooming in on him. Not, not trying to break the moment. I just did, though. Um, Sarge? If you want to make your father's wish come true, if that's what you really want, then who's to say it's too late? Why don't you take the first step now? My first step? That's right. You can cast off all your regret. You can stop standing still and start moving forward. You have the power within you. I know from experience. <laughs> I, see. I know what it's like to feel like you do. But only you, only you can decide to take that first step. It's, it's not a hackneyed platitude or whatever it is true. If you don't change your tactics now, Sarge, the victory you seek in the war you're waging will always lie beyond your grasp. Well said, Apollo. Yeah, well done. Hmm. I think I understand now. I've... I've made up my mind! As of this moment, I will suspend my siege defense indefinitely. <laughs> Good job, kid. It must be extremely hard. Oh, wow. Well, considering what happened, I mean, I don't know if he's always been in that wheelchair, but that would, his mother's actions make more sense if he was, you know? Yeah. Or she, as the case may be. Whoops! No one... Well, no, they did talk about Dr. Buff's son. Well, it's possible they just made an assumption based on the military aspect? I don't know. Alternately, it's that whole thing in Japanese... Where there isn't really a pronoun? You don't... You wouldn't... Yeah. What? Oh, that's surprising. To Sergeant Buff, re reporting for duty. What the hell? Ah, I thought you were a guy! You're definitely not the gruff drill sergeant I envisioned! Nobody ever really thought that Dr. Buff's kid was a gruff drill sergeant, right? Well, my mama was in the Russian army. Well, that explains why you keep using comrade and using a lot of Russian metaphors. I was just as shocked, but it certainly explained a few things when I found out, too. May I introduce to you Miss Army Buff, age 12. Well, I, we were right about the age, and I remember saying military buff, but couldn't figure out how to make it work. Yeah. That's because it was army. <laughs> By the way, the way she's holding Sarge there looks like she has missiles equipped on her shirt. That's really, that's really awesome. No way, but I guess it doesn't matter that much. Careful, soldier. Don't forget I could blow you away at a moment's notice. Why am I always surrounded by women like this? <laughs> what is with that monkey face? She, she's just too cute. Of course you two would get along. I like how she's combing her hair with her fingers. Yeah, brightly colored and full of hate and evil that you're <laughs> ready to, to inflict on others. So, have you always been in a wheelchair, Sarge? Negative. Only since I was injured. I see. In the fire. It was that. I wonder if she's ever going to recover. Um, your voice sounds awfully different from before. Yes. <laughs> so was she just going crazy on the thing? I guess she was. My drone features a voice modulation device. It's just one of my army's many technological marvels. Like if she was, when she started freaking out, she just was like wiggling the switch <laughs> up and down. Because that's what you do when you're freaking out. 
Well, you fooled me. I thought some 20-something military fanatic was at the controls. <laughs> I, I was thinking Dr. Bob's child was younger than that, but uh, yeah, other than that. If it's all the same to you troops, I'd like to continue my testimony. I've just remembered something, and it's as crisp and clear as a trumpet at roll call. What did you remember? That Dots wasn't there. It wasn't my mother who appeared in the burning orb. Oh? By the way, <laughs> the star and the wing uh -huh. on her collar, those are pajamas, okay? And uh -huh. she has like, like this kind of Kirby Mario thing going on on her collar, and that is adorable. I like her helmet and goggles, too. Like aviator shield. Yeah. It was some lady Papa had shown me in a picture of a long time ago. The founding mother, I guess, is what he said. Maybe. Some lady? Is she by some... Ch oh! He said it was the Holy Mother, the founder of Koreanism. That makes way more sense, but it... Seems... And that's why the Garan family wants to make sure no one ever gets a hold of it. Yeah, yeah. Because all they need is a face and the true name. Well, you know that that is going to be and around. who's read the Book of Secrets that has the Holy Mother's true name in it? Maya. The Holy Mother being channeled is something that uh, is going to happen. She appeared right there, right in the burning orb. What is this even about anymore? What did you just say? And Phoenix, I mean, uh, and Phoenix knows what this is about, of course. Uh huh. And it would make sense that she would see her mother there, because oh of everything Ami uh, uh, Amelia. What the? <laughs> because of everything Athena said. Bye bye. Good job, as always, Widget. The Holy Mother of Crianism was in the burning orb. <laughs> What does that even mean? Well, the orb, we don't have the context! Well, the orb wasn't set on fire. That's the power it has, but you don't have any of this context, do you, Athena? <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. Meanwhile, somebody understands a bit more. So, what you're telling me is the Holy Mother of Kurianism appeared in this, in this orb. One might even say... To wit, it is the Founder's Orb, which is why the Holy Mother of Kurianism <laughs> appeared in it, as opposed to it just being a, a knockoff made somewhere. Which may have great power, but I'm just saying. I don't think this was made in China or whatever. <laughs> Could this explain what Sarge means by the Holy Mother appearing in the Burning Orb? You mean these... Research notes? Offer thy prayers as fervent as fire. Only, Only then, then shall the Holy Mother return. With her face. And if and you got the name. BAM! We've got Lady Kira's name. Dr. Buff's research notes? What do they have to do with this? Maybe they are the same person, I mean. Maybe. Look at this. Well, yeah! Maybe so. We Because the notes were... Her name was in the Book of Secrets. It's a big deal... And the Holy Mother and Lady Kira are both faceless. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could be two different people, or not. Uh, hard I, to say. It's. I bet. I bet they're the same person. I bet they are too. Look at this. The burning orb. The appearance of the founder. This part points to both. The Mitama motif from the Kurain founding period. There's a legend about the orb involving a mysterious riddle. Oh, I know this. And this song, in turn, is said to contain the key to solving it. M Mr. Wright, I guess I shouldn't be that surprised that you know this. <laughs> if the legend is true, then I believe the answer lies in this part of the song. Offer thy prayers as fervent as fire, only then shall the Holy Mother return. Well, anyone see where I'm going with this? Prayers as fervent as fire? Oh, God! You're supposed to set the orb on fire? Are no! You serious? No, Mr. Wright! What is this, the One Ring? The whole stanza seems to suggest that the founder will appear if the orb is set on fire. So it's not just overflowing with power that seems to make it look like it's burning. You Aww. just have to burn it. I'm kind of sad about that. 
Wait, so the doctor, he... That's right. The doctor managed to successfully light the orb on fire without posing a danger to the house. <laughs> Let's hear it for fire safety. Yes, Athena. He had solved the ancient riddle of the Founder's Orb. Oh my! Papa was a great archaeologist, so I believe in him, and I want to believe. I want to believe he achieved his long-time dream of solving that riddle before he died. Well, we won't know for sure until we try it for ourselves. So I guess, I guess Army is actually really a lot like Futaba. More yeah. so, more so than we ever suspected when we made that joke. I mean, they're basically like the same character, <laughs> which is which is fine, which is fine. I'm not complaining. It's just it is funny, isn't it? Yes, do it, Private Justice, please. I want to see what Papa was searching for with my own eyes. Objection! The um uh, the plaintiff must object to this. Why? Objection. The plaintiff will stand down and be quiet. We're getting to the bottom of this. You don't have the right to set a precious relic like that on fire. Objection. Oh, but I do. All I needed was Sarge's permission. Since we still don't know if this treasure is the Founder's Orb or the Crystal of Ami Fei, any ownership rights the doctor had now belong to his daughter. Oh. Therefore, you have absolutely no right to stop us. The orb belongs to Army Buff until we figure out if it's the Founder's Orb, in which case it belongs to us, or if it's the Crystal of Ami Fay, in which case it belongs to Titian Wimperson. I'm generally against fire in the courtroom, but uh, very well, Mr. Justice. I never thought I'd be saying this, but you may burn the evidence. I also love the dueling objections between Apollo and Phoenix. All right, finally, I get to set something aflame in court. Burn my passion, my crimson fury. Apollo? Look, you don't get to let stuff like this out that often. Good thing it's covered in oil, so it would actually light up. Well, maybe the Founder's Orb is just, uh, flammable? Kind of necessary, right? <laughs> Athena, look! Uh, Apollo, the inside of the orb, it's melting! Oh, there's something in there! Oh! So that's how it works, and the treasure is indeed the face. What? D Dirk! Isn't she... Her garb leaves no room for doubt. It's the Founder herself! Face and all. Yeah, the face oh. of the Holy Mother is why nobody needs to... This orb can't get out. I... I don't understand why I'm standing up the witness stand. Ah, that's Ace Attorney. I already complained about that before. The greatest of taboos in Koreanism is the depiction of the Founder's face. Yet here it is, hidden within this orb. So it's not that it was supernatural, it's that there's some type of chemical reaction or whatever. And she just saw the fire from like the lighter or something and freaked out. Yeah, yeah. How, how remarkably, <laughs> I mean, it'd be cool if it was some like magic superpower crystal, but the, the thing is it shows the face and that in itself is the magic superpower. That's what's going to grant spiritual power to yeah. whoever channels her. Sorry, Mr. Wright, but as you can see, the issue is crystal clear. <laughs> it's also clear because I cleared the crystal. <laughs> it's, I'm sitting on that. I've used that one for years. It's, it's crystal clear. It's crystal clear. I'm get proud it? of you. Get it? Yeah, I, I got it. No? Okay. Objection. <laughs> this figure is the Holy Mother, founder of Koreanism. And based on that, this must be none other than the Founder's Orb! You saw Dirk's reaction! Well played! Now here's the part where I point out the illegality of you owning it because Dr. Buff is dead. Objection! 
Be that as it may... Don't bring that up! Mr. Rebel still may have killed the Doctor. If so, it would render the orb transfer agreement null and void. Yeah, that's of course what you did. And by the way, I don't know if Dots is ever going to forgive you after this one, though I guess you've gotten your revenge. Don't play dumb, Mr. Wright. The truth of the matter has already been proven. Dr. Buff wasn't killed right after Sarge saw Mr. A Rebel. It happened after the doctor came back from hiding the orb. And I bet it was Pushy Miss Pushpants who was already trying to kill me and Dirt. You've no proof that Mr. A Rebel was still around at the time. Mm, ah, well, you see. Your claim that the Defiant Dragons were behind the crime doesn't hold water. Was that a pun? Well, no, it really wasn't. And that means the orb transfer agreement is still perfectly valid. No! Admit it, Mr. Wright. I just burned your whole case to the ground. You're on fire, son. Oh. No! What are you doing back on the stand? I... I won? I actually won? M Mr. Wright, would you care to respond? R respond? The trap he set up was to ah. pin it on dots. Wow. I didn't think so. Wait, did we just win? Did we actually beat the turnabout terror? You're amazing, Apollo. Well, it helps when we have the facts on our side. D don't just stand there, right? Do something. Hold on, I have to turn my thinking around. I'm going to stand here for five minutes while I link it all up in my brain. Yeah, and so he's just sitting there, and then, then uh, Apollo and Athena are like, Oh no, look <laughs> at him! He's turning his thinking around! <laughs> Someone stop him! Um, well, I don't think there's any digging out of this hole. Speaking of holes... Might I point out, there is a suspicious man who uh, pushed me and Dirk down a cliff <laughs> in a cave with this orb. Now, is there some connection? I'm just saying he already said he did that. <laughs> Mr. Attition Wimperson, I think it's time for your concession speech. Booyah! Boom! Political joke, yeah! <laughs> it's pretty good. It's like crystal clear. I, so I, I was like, concede, because he's lost his... Electric. Apollo, you're taking after your father too much. Oh. Oh! 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 No! I've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the Founder's Orb. The facts don't lie, but you obviously do! How's that for a campaign slogan? BAM! Why, you contemptuous peasant. That was a great line. The facts don't lie, but, but you, you obviously, obviously do. do. I'm going to use that in my personal life. <laughs> hmm. I think this is a good time to wrap up this trial. If both parties have no further objections, I will render my verdict. What? Really? Already? No objections here, Your Honor. Well, then we'll probably have to come back and deal with the whole defending dots or something like that. No, no. Politician's gonna come up with something. Uh, no, I'm dead. Yep. You can't do this. The crystal is mine. I'll lose the election if I lose that crystal. You'd lose the election if you ha if you won the crystal. I I'm sorry, but there's really nothing more I can do. You're also not entitled to an election victory. Uh, yeah. You haven't forgotten about our little chat. Have you? And that, of oh, course. Oh, no. I mean, Atishin's benefactor has got to be obviously somebody from Kurain, whether it's Garan or Inga. Yes. Or, or another character. Yeah. Um, and that is what, how Phoenix got entangled in this. It's no accident that he's here. Yeah. This is where he came from, straight from Kurain, without Maya. Right. What's going on here? Objection! Your Honor, I I object to the defense's last claim. Huh, the old Edgeworth trick, huh? 
my the most memorable line in Ace Attorney for me, the one where I really realized that I loved the series, was uh -huh. in the first game when Edgeworth, who's got his case in the bag, but he knows the person on the stand did it. And uh -huh. he knows that, that Phoenix is right. Even though the, it's like the, the case is done, the judge is about to give a verdict, and Edgeworth is going to win, but he just is like, OBJECTION! That's OBJECTIONABLE! Yeah. And that was just so memorable for me. And then he starts, like, picking it apart with you. Yeah, yeah well, but he was kind of, like, didn't really know how to do it or how to argue against himself at the time. But the thing was, is that line always stuck. Not because it's necessarily the best line or the best joke or something like that, but because it was the first time there was something like that. It was really nice. That's why I like it. I actually remember that part, too, and I also remember, like, remember the event from their past. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's in the next case. The one after that. Right, right. Okay, stop reminiscing about Ace Attorney, guys. I wasn't even in the series yet. What? What's Wright talking about? I don't believe they have truly proven that the relic is indeed the Founder's Orb. Objection! Whoa, whoa! Mr. Wright! I don't even think you can bluff your way out of this one. What possible argument could you have to claim that this isn't the Founder's Orb? Um, about that. Hold on, give me a minute. Oh, of course! Something I do all the time! He, he really did turn his thinking around. <laughs> he, he can't possibly have hit on something. The defense's assertion is incomplete. And this is why. The defense is basing their claim that this relic is the Founder's Orb on a legend. And that legend claims that the Founder will return when the riddle is solved at last. Right? And that's actually what happened. The Founder was revealed for all to see. But Mr. Justice, what about the rest of the legend? Oh my god. <sighs> really? <laughs> go, go get my... Go get... Go get Pearl. Yeah! And that'll fulfill the rest of the legend. Hey, you're right! Because then, after well, a mean, phone call to Maya yeah. and that name, <laughs> yeah, then yeah. we can try it out, huh? But we're, we're not gonna do that to prove this case. We surely not. What? According to the legend, once the founder returned, she would bestow spiritual power onto the person who solved the riddle. But you That is such a freaking oh my god! The spiritual power bestowed comes from the fact that you see the face of the Holy Mother and thus can channel the Holy Mother. That's what it is! It fulfills the legend! But I am Apollo Justice and I know not of channeling! You're, you're kidding, right? We have to argue about this. Well, Mr. Justice? Do you feel great spiritual power coursing through your veins? Can we get BSG in here to argue this point? <laughs> um, no. But, but receiving spiritual powers and stuff, since I don't have the experience you do, it's all just mystic mumbo jumbo, right? Maybe so, but you're the one basing your claim on said legend. <laughs> okay, you got me with that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> and what we saw here does not fully fulfill it, does it? Mr. Wright, this is dirty! You can refute the claim <laughs> you're making! Dirk can refute the claim you're making! He can, right? He is a Koreanist, right? Yeah, of course he is. What about Pearl? And this is Kuda. Well, this trial isn't Kudain. Uh, well, I... No, no, but... Consequently, you cannot rightfully claim that this is the Founder's Orb. That's... That's dirty. That's dirty, Mr. Wright. I'm so sorry. I'm doing this for you, you piece of crap. What was that, Mr. Wright? Nothing. What's gotten into him? Why is Mr. Wright doing this? Hmm... It would appear that Mr. Wright has lost a few of his marbles. Even I can see that that's shaky at best. Th that couldn't be further from the truth, Your Honor. I, you're, no, you're using your powers of bluffing for evil! In any case, 
man, I wonder, I really do wonder exactly what the involvement is over on that side, you know? I believe this is a good time for a recess. Both sides will have 20 minutes to prepare. Can we consult with each other and figure out what's going on? That's what a recess is. I ask that all arguments be ready by then. Oh, and Mr. Wright, you do well to wash up and find your missing marbles by then, too. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he got hit by the judge, just like he always does. I feel like I got penalized. You know, I think we saw him get a penalty. You know, I'm satisfied with that. Isn't that... Remember, I was complaining earlier, maybe yeah. it was even in the last episode. That I it, think so, yeah. That, that why is it that Wright has complete control over the courtroom when we're not playing as him? <laughs> okay, okay. You know, Francisca von Karma never got penalized for repeatedly battering the judge with a whip. Don't look too deep into that. I won't, Your Honor. But now, now... Phoenix kind of kind of took a hit. I am mollified, not satisfied. Mollified. Mr. Wright has sure acted funny. Yeah, I know. I mean, he's famous for going out on a limb, but that last assertion was just plain crazy. It's either a bluff or, more likely, a hail mary. Either way, it doesn't make much sense. Maybe there's something we're missing here. Yes, I've decided to talk to you this time. Although, you seemed perfectly normal when we spoke earlier. I think there is something missing. Apollo, I have a bad feeling about this. I'm going to go check up on him. Thanks, please do. Trucy's going to be your assistant for the next stretch. Phoenix Wright isn't going to kill Athena when she goes to check on him. <laughs> she's coming back. <laughs> and even if she's not done with him by the time the trial starts, Phoenix is the plaintiff's <laughs> attorney. So... He'd, he'd have to make her stop talking to him so he could go lawyer. And so she would come back. No, she should get lost. What's going on with you, Mr. Wright? Hey, Private Justice? Oh, Sarge. I forgot to mention something. Uh, on the night of Papa's murder, a strange thing happened. Stranger than what I've already expressed. Oh? But why are you only telling me about it now? Well, I didn't say anything before because I thought Papa's death was an accident. But now that we know otherwise, I figured it might be important. There's still more to this case? When I left my room and lost consciousness, I passed out right here. That's right above the coffee bar. Mm-hmm. But when I came to... Someone was pushing my wheelchair. That is an extremely important detail. What? I was so scared, I beat a hasty retreat as fast as my wheels could take me. Do you know who it was? No, it was pitch black. Plus, I fled to my room so fast, I didn't even have a chance to turn on the lights. Well, it wasn't Dot, so... Maybe it was your father. No, he would have said something to me. Besides, I'd have known if it was him. So then, it could have been the, your father's real killer? Yeah. That's what I was about to say. My thoughts exactly. But you didn't report this to the police? It didn't even occur to me. It's, it's okay. You were obviously still upset, so don't beat yourself up over it. You've told me now. Apollo, this could be really important information. I think the act of pushing Sarge's wheelchair could be part of some bigger scheme. It's hard to see why else the killer would have done such a thing. Yeah. Guess I should take your statement down as evidence. Oh, welcome back, Athena. I've been killed by Mr. Ra- oh, sorry. Hmm. What's with the long face? How to go with Mr. Wright? What should I? Athena? Oops, sorry. Uh, zoned out there for a sec. The recess is almost over, so let's go. <laughs> what was that all about? What did he tell you? <laughs> and are you going to tell me?
All right, court is, once again, back in session. Now, um, Mr. Wright, about that last objection you raised. Yeah, where are we going from here, huh? We, the plaintiffs, still believe that the defense have yet to sufficiently prove its case. They claim that, according to legend, the Founder's Orb would bestow spiritual power. Yet the relic in question has failed to do so. Therefore, it has failed its own test. If we really have to argue on this point, there are things that we can do. But is that really the direction we ought to go? That isn't the direction we ought to go, but mm, politician has some kind of influence over Phoenix. What I'm saying is I don't think that trying to drag out spirit channelers is the way we ought to go. That's all I meant. Not that that, that was not the case. Right, right. I, I see. He's sticking with that ridiculous argument? Is there any way to argue against it without dragging in someone from the village? Furthermore, even if it is the Founder's Orb, it can't be awarded to the Defiant Dragons. Ah, uh, we're going with this. After all, they were the ones who killed Dr. Buff. Objection! What are you talking about? That was already proven to be false. It wasn't Dots. There are no grounds for asserting that the Defiant Dragons murdered the Doctor. Oh, but I'm afraid there are, Mr. Justice. Your Honor, I would like to present new testimony to this court from everyone's favorite witness. Testimony that will show that Dots the Rebel did, in fact, kill Dr. Buff. What? Very well, you may call your witness. If you had something like this, why didn't you drag it out before? I guess Mr. Wright found another new angle. What new testimony could there be this late in the game? <laughs> Athena? Of course it is! Oh, you thought you were rid of me. How silly. Fellow citizens, it is I, politician, the once and future representative of the people. I am Apollo Justice, and I am fed up with your shit. Get on with it. Stop speechifying. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> My client divulged new information to me during the recess. Of course he did. How convenient for you. He remembered something he saw, you see. Something crucial to this case. And I'm just going to push it along. Because he doesn't have a choice. Uh, thank you! I've been saying that this whole time! <laughs> How very convenient. You know you miss me. Mr. Wimperson, please come here. I have this lighter, you see. <laughs> when we tried setting the Founder's Orb on fire, it brought new facts to light in the case. Let's see what happens if I set you on fire. Are there any more facts that can be brought to light? As his defense lawyer, I'm torn. <laughs> Your Honor, what do you say? I have to remain impartial in this instance. Dots is crime. It was around 11 at night, despite what I said earlier, and I was out on a mobile meet and greet around the village. That's when I saw Dr. Buff being murdered from outside his study window, hiding under the tree as I was. Mr. A Rebel snuck up from behind and struck him on the head. His weapon of choice? A suitcase. Really? That's what you're going with? He just happens to suddenly say, now he is suddenly claiming that despite everything else that happened, he did see it and we have the murder weapon. Except there wasn't any blood on the suitcase because that would kind of stand out, wouldn't it? This is complete and utter hogwash. And if it was the frickin' briefcase, he'd leave with it. How, how can the judge accept this? Well, you know how I am. I just see all the nice testimony and if, pretty if, lights and... If, uh, if a Titian had this, he should have already said it. Ah! A big, strong man like him could easily swing a heavy suitcase into someone's head. Attention, wimpy sting! You are making me want to strangle you and devolve into that shouting and whining I did a few episodes ago. You saw the murder as it happened, and now you remember it? You're just telling us now? Because... <laughs> I saved the best for last. It's a tactic known to all political geniuses. An October surprise? 
But this is May, Mr. Wimperson. Well, it's technically October as we're recording it. Okay, you got me on that one. The murder weapon was a complete mystery. But my client's eyewitness account has finally brought it into the light. Mr. Wright, you can't buy this. I don't have a choice on what I'm buying right now. I guess you're right. According to the autopsy report, he was not hit with a giant briefcase full of dumbbells. Dr. Buff was struck in the head by the corner of some object. Yeah, I... Yeah, look at all the round corners! If he was hit by a briefcase full, full of, of dumbbells, dumbbells, it would have crushed his skull! I was trying to come up with a better way to say it than that, but yes. Also, we have, in fact, been all over the suitcase. We can't forget the experience, emulator. So... <laughs> Blow the dust off. Blow the dust off. Blow I, the dust off! I can assure you, there was no blood on any corner. I suppose that could very well be the corner of a suitcase. Emma, you're the forensic scientist here. Why don't we just get some luminol and take care of this? Objection! But eyewitness testimony isn't the same as hard evidence. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. Now you have evidence? What's that supposed to mean? We have physical evidence too. A luminol test revealed. Um, the doctor's blood on Mr. A Rebel's case. What? Oh, oh, you really did do what I just said then. But how does that prove Mr. A Rebel used it as a weapon? Objection! You should know the answer to that, Mr. Justice. Since you know as well as I that the suitcase is covered in his fingerprints. Well, so not enough for you to get an accurate reading. Now, where it? Maybe it really wasn't covered in his fingerprints, but um, no! And we dusted it right in front of Emma, too. Well, here's the thing. He wasn't killed in front of the bookshelf. We still need to address the coffee stains yeah. and the stain on the painting. Oh, yeah. He, he was killed in front of the coffee station and placed under the frickin' books. Yes. The turnabout terror strikes again. We haven't even gotten to the meat of that argument. Hmm. This is quite convincing testimony and evidence. How can you say that? With my mouth. Wimperson just popped up out of nowhere to suddenly decisively have the answer to everything? Why? Why didn't he lead with that? I saw him do it. Defense, you know as well as I do how these things go. Uh, okay, okay. So I don't just descend into the whining again. I'll back off. <laughs> Nevertheless, you may proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Justice. It was around 11 at night, and I was out on a mobile meeting greet around the village. Hold it. Oh, okay. You were on a so-called mobile meet and greet at 11 at night? What? This isn't a college town. That's right. It's the perfect time because everyone is at home, so they can't get away from me. You should have seen how the villagers' eyes teared up when they heard what I had to say as I left. <laughs> no, they teared up for, <laughs> with tears of frustration and sheer terror, no doubt. You weren't riding around in your palanking? That's right. Some village idiot reported me to the police. What was illegal about it? I've been banned from using it after dark. Oh, okay. That's fine. No wonder. What with all the noise he makes. Good job. You know, the right, there may be a write-in candidacy that will totally trash him. <laughs> all you have to do is just run in the election and you'll beat the tension. <laughs> okay, so what exactly did you see then? Write-ins have worked. That's when I saw Dr. Buff being murdered from outside his study window. Under that tree. Sounds like you witnessed something rather shocking. Indeed. I didn't even believe it at first. I mean, a vicious murder and crying? Why didn't you tell me this before? Never mind. Never mind. There haven't been many murders there, I take it? If I'm elected, I promise you that such a terrible tragedy will never happen again. Are you saying that a vote for politician Wimperson is a vote against murder? Does that mean that for some reason, a vote for the opponent of politician Wimperson is a vote for murder? Claims like that are so infuriating to me. You said it, not me. 
Ah! A vote for me is a vote to banish murder forever from our beloved crime village. A vote from your, for your opponent is not a vote for murder, you piece of crap. I hate that argument. Good luck with that. Mr. Attitian Wimperson, please tell the court what you saw at the scene of the crime. That's fun. Mr. Rebel snuck up from behind and struck him on the head. And you just now remembered. He snuck up from behind? So you're saying the doctor never even realized Mr. Rebel was there? That's right. He was utterly absorbed in a book. In a book, was it? I see. What did you see Mr. Rebel do next? He climbed up the bookshelf ladder and dumped a bunch of books down on the body. I believe he was trying to make it look like an accident. You you speak from experience, I take it? Oh, no. Mr. Wimperson? But that idiot didn't realize I could see everything from outside the window. You know, earlier, I was enraged by by the whole, a vote for me is a vote against murder. Uh, because that, that always implies that a vote for your opponent is a vote yeah. for murder, okay? I know, I, I know I'm hammering that logic, but anybody who ever hears anybody make claims like this needs to understand that that is the argument they're making. Anyway, there is something you can say about Wimperson here, though. Yeah. A vote for politician Wimperson is a vote for murder. One of those statements does not feel right. And it's all of them. Your Honor, I believe the witness made an important statement just now about how Dots, Dots is, is an, an idiot. idiot. Um, the crime scene was clearly visible? Yeah, because we just had the note about it being pitch black, perhaps? Or it's completely at night? Or No, 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 it's the, 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 the bookcase, the bookcase. Because he, the doctor was reading a book, okay? Uh -huh. go, go to the court record. Okay. See, if he was reading a book at his desk, he wouldn't be able to see him from the tree because there's that bookshelf that's pushing oh, away from privacy. Oh, you're right! So it is, it is that the crime was visible. If the crime was visible through the window, that's earth-shattering testimony. Is it? It is. Because to my ears, it sounds like a rather obvious fact. That's why it's easy to disprove. Uh, oh, he didn't like that? Hmm. Very well. Will the witness please continue with this testimony? Well, we'll come back here then and do it the way that you want it. His weapon of choice? A suitcase. Dr. Buff sure has a sturdy head, Mr. Attition Wimperson. Are you sure? A vote for me is a vote for suitcases. Positive. I saw it with my own two eyes. Yet, despite your certainty, you kept quiet about it until now? No, I was waiting. I knew there would be a perfect chance to talk about it later. Such as when we were talking about what you were doing in front of the window? Information must always be disclosed in a strategic manner. This is why everyone hates you. That is one of the lessons of Kingcraft, as taught by the Attitian clan. You have never had a king to craft in your... Is there a lesson, by chance, in the Attitian Kingcraft guidebook on being honest? Yeah, I bet it says don't do it. <laughs> anyway, I saw Mr. Rebel commit that heinous crime. How heinous was it? This much? A big, strong man like him could easily swing a heavy suitcase into someone's head. Hold it. I, I'd have to agree, that suitcase is really heavy. Wait a second. How did you know it was so heavy? For all you knew, it could have been empty. Oh! I mean, uh... Hey, hey, Mr. Wright! My client witnessed the crime in progress. So naturally, he saw Mr. Rebel straining to lift what was obviously a heavy suitcase. Woo! You! I can't say I'm a fan of you trying to discredit my client by tripping him up, Mr. Justice. Mr. Wright! But I'm just doing what you always do, Mr. Wright! Talk about new testimony. He's totally changed his story. If he'd really seen the murder taking place, you'd think he'd have said so from the start. Maybe he had some reason to hide what he really saw. You're giving him the benefit of the doubt? Well, this might be our only opening. Okay, so I guess it's the... I guess it's the book part. The doctor was reading a book at the time of the murder? I 
think that's vital testimony, though we haven't quite put together why yet. Very well. The witness will please add that statement to his testimony for further pressing and disproving. Man, thanks to that, we can actually move on. Otherwise, we would have been sure it was the other one and tried to throw the diagram at it. The doctor was standing in front of the bookshelves, absorbed in a book. Dipping his book in the coffee before beginning to take a bite. <laughs> you know, like a nice bookish pastry. You watched a murderer commit his crime and did nothing to stop it? Like say, hey, look out! There's a guy behind you with a darned heavy suitcase! You would hear someone straining with a heavy object dragging it. Well, maybe he had earbuds in and was listening to his favorite podcast. Have you ever considered that? Hey, that's Look, my job. I'm a witness and ace attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I can make stuff up off the top of my head and the judge believes it. <laughs> and none of the attorneys challenge it and let it be accepted into the record. That doesn't sound like a good way to score points with the voting public, Mr. Wimpy Singh. I'm a politician, not a superhero. I'm under no obligation to risk life and limb. He sure is quick to deny his obligations when there's nothing in it for him. I I hate this man. <laughs> I am getting tired of listening to his endless campaigning and flimsy rationalizations. Paper thin. Just like a real politician. About your testimony, Mr. Etitian Wimperson, please. You said Mr. A Rebel struck the doctor from behind while he was absorbed in a book. Yes, that's exactly what happened. All right, now let's figure out why that's wrong. Well, it's certainly not this. That does line up with the claim. Oh, yeah. They were found on his desk. He can't read anything without that's it. them. And that's why you run through all your evidence. Bam! Objection. Boy! The doctor was standing in front of the bookshelves, absorbed in a book, you say. I'm sorry, but it seems your testimony is for some reason, completely unreliable. That's quite a bold statement. Well, let's hear you back it up. I challenge you to prove that I am anything but 100% reliable. Okay. Ah, uh, your honor, as, as his lawyer, I must object. <laughs> it would be my pleasure, Mr. Wimperson. Lately, it seems the doctor's eyes have gotten so bad he needed... Reading glasses. How convenient that after Mr. A Rebel struck him on the head and slew him, he then reached down, picked up the glasses, cleaned them off, and then folded them neatly in place on their rather unique uh, glasses holder. Uh, what a considerate man tidying everything up. Uh, Your Honor, it, it is well known that, that uh, Dr. He... Rebel is like... Uh, uh, a clean freak. That's yeah. why there were all the books on the ground and the blood is because he's a clean freak. Uh, yeah. His reading glasses were over on his desk. So you see, there's no way he could have been reading in front of the bookshelves. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Edition Wimperson, but I'm going to have to ask you to explain this discrepancy to the voting public. What the hell is wrong with you? I, I... You what? What do you mean, nah, 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 nah? I'll explain it, you lowly cur. What? I simply made a mistake, you see. The doctor was actually sitting at his desk when Mr. A Rebel hit him over the head. Oh, he was? And now you can point out what you wanted to point out. But then the doctor would have been facing him. Surely he would have seen him and tried to run. Also, you don't have x-ray vision. D Dr. Buff w was nodding off. Therefore, you had x-ray vision? And, and as he was nodding off, he took his glasses off and set them on the desk. And that's why there was no blood splatter on the desk. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. T tell me more. I could tell because his eyes were closed and he wasn't moving. How close were you, Mr. Etitian? That, that sounds more like what you would do. Then how do you explain the fact that he was struck in the back of the head? That's awfully inconvenient. Isn't that something that should be impossible from the front of the desk? And if he brought the suitcase down, it would smash his head between the suitcase and the desk. That suitcase is full of dumbbells! Uh, well, yes, yes, we, we both know that his head would, like, explode like it was somebody hitting a watermelon with a baseball bat. Oh, um, about that. About that? He 
He bowed his head when he nodded off. That's when he was clobbered. Oh, yeah? Hmm, this is bull trap. I mean, so that's what you saw. Man, it's a good thing your memory is so good. It, if you would have remembered this last time, it might have been a little easier, but... Well, Mr. Justice, that sounds like a perfectly reasonable explanation to me. Do you have a problem with the proposal that the doctor was struck while nodding off? A big problem! There is a problem. A very big problem. The witness's statement doesn't hold up under the slightest bit of scrutiny. Is that so? Then will you please show this court what evidence you have to justify this? Gladly, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Got that one perfect. This shows the problem with the witness's claim that he saw the doctor nodding off. We've been trying to do this for a while. Because of the bookcase. A diagram of the study? Shameful, I know. Mr. Atitian Winperson allegedly viewed the murder from here. And the doctor was allegedly nodding off here. But from his vantage point, the bookcase would have blocked the witness's line of sight. Why, yes! I believe you're right! B -b 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 but... Ah, I need more tape! Objection! Ah, oh, so Mr. Wright's still here after all. The fact remains, my client knew that the suitcase was the murder weapon. No, you can't write this I, off! Uh, mm. So he definitely has first-hand knowledge of the crime scene. Phoenix, please. I'm afraid I have to agree with you there, Mr. Wright. But then, we have to ask ourselves, from what vantage point did he see the murder? What are you insinuating, Mr. Justice? From what vantage point could Mr. Etitian Winterson have seen the dozing doctor? Once we determine that, I believe we'll finally see the truth behind this incident. Oh, no. The way that the witness described the murder scene was very detailed. Well, that kind of seems to mean that the witness saw the murder from... You've got to be kidding! But, but that's... It is indeed. But everything only makes sense if the witness was there in the study. Inside the study? But that's the scene of the crime! I know! Mr. Etitian Wimperson, the man who claims to be a witness to the murder... Is technically correct. ...was most certainly a witness to the murder. He was in that very room! Uh, Apollo, are you suggesting... It's the same thing I always suggest in trials, that this witness is the real killer! Mr. Etitian Wimperson, weren't you the one who actually swung that suitcase? Yeah! What you're proposing is ludicrous! My client is a small, thin man, whereas Mr. A Rebel has the musculature to pull it off. He has a point about that. But how do we know that under that suit jacket of his, that he's not, not like actually ripped. super pumped up? Oh? A politician who's super pumped up underneath? What was that we were saying about <laughs> Futaba? <laughs> Dumbbells, son. I'm just saying. I gave up trying to lift that thing after one go. But I'm a pretty sissy guy. That's right. He's the only one who could have lifted such a heavy object. Now do you understand? The rebel dots a rebel. Is a mouthful. Is the doctor's killer. As long as the suitcase is the murder weapon, suspicion falls entirely on dots. Huh. You'll have to poke a hole in Mr. Wright's argument somehow, Apollo. Oh, I will. And with his own technique, no less. If Mr. Etitian Wimperson couldn't swing the suitcase around, we'll just have to consider another way he could have swung something around, or he could have used it as a murder weapon instead. I'm going to turn this case on its head, Mr. Wright. Just like you taught me. Hmm. You talk big, Mr. Justice. But do you have what it takes? 
do you have what it takes? Well, this should be interesting. I've got my popcorn right here. All right, let me think about this. So I bet what he did was, like, he took the suitcase up the ladder <laughs> and then put the wheels so that, um, like, set the wheels of the suitcase on the, the ladder, and then he let it go, and it, like, went down like a roller coaster, and then it did a loop-de-loop, -loop, and then it shot Apollo, a no. fireball and hit him in the face. <laughs> and that's how he got an injury on the back of his head, because he got hit in the face with it. What do you think, Mr. Wright? How's that? Mr. Attition Wimperson's testimony has been filled with one inaccuracy after another. And that is a great understatement. <laughs> First, he stated that Dr. Buff was in front of the bookshelves. Now, he claims that the doctor was sitting at his desk. So, where was the victim really when he was killed? Also, where was his killer? And how was the murder weapon really used? So the important thing here is the position of the victim and killer relative to each other. Yes, Your Honor. If they were positioned in a certain way, it would be possible to use the suitcase as a weapon without lifting a finger. Shoving him, and he trips and falls into it. On the back of his... Well, is that really gonna kill We've him? We've already shown he's really good at shoving. I guess he does have a pretty good shove, yeah? You can't mean... I would ask the court to recall the study's layout. It's quite distinctive, as you can see. Now, if Dr. Buff were sitting in a certain spot, and his killer was at a certain other spot, the suitcase would become a weapon anyone could use. I'm not quite getting this one. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Justice. Where was Dr. Buff's killer at the time of the crime? Huh. His notes had fallen down next to the coffee bar. There's a coffee stain on that book there, and what looks like coffee smeared on the wall scroll next to the coffee oh, bar. Oh yeah, that's true. So, so if he was sitting at the coffee bar, sure, and I mean, that's grabbed and pulled back, then he um, wouldn't be able to defend himself if his head struck the bottom corner of the suitcase, which wouldn't budge because it's full of dumbbells. I mean, it's, it's got, it, that's what it's got to be. It just seems, the only thing that I'm concerned about is the, is the position of the blood. Yeah. Because it's just weird that it's the bottom. It's, that's, that's all I'm getting at, because you're right about the coffee on the book and the scroll. I mean, that's got to be what it is, though. I just... So he would have to be about here. I mean, could he pull him back with that much force? Because he, he can't push him, he has to pull him. But I mean, that's the only thing we can allege, isn't it? Yeah. There isn't anything else we can say. That is the only way it could happen. I, I still find it preposterous, but... Take that! How could the murder... Because we got it wrong. Oh, I see. Because we that wasn't the case. Ah, I see. It was the Dogu! Well, maybe it was. Obviously, like we said, we haven't quite put this together. And it looks like we ain't gonna end this episode because we're out of time! <laughs> you may have gotten off this week, Wimperson, but next week, we'll put you in your place! You mean, you're going to make me win the election? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>